Did you know Doverson? Fellow with a scar across his eye. Tried to kill me in Boulogne once. Lovely man. Dead now. Look, have any of you chaps got a cigarette? I'm dying for one. Thanks. I hate to be madly difficult, but does anyone have low tar? It's a thing with me. Dear me, is no one concerned about my health? I think this stuff's almost set, incidentally. Time you were leaving, then. Perhaps you could point me towards the door. I see. Reminds me of something. Peterson, in Bergamo. Now it's going to happen to you. Yes, I did meet Peterson once, briefly. Dead now. Is that all you can say? It was Bergamo. You don't want me to finish the story about Doverson, right? Well? Dying is easy, Valentine. It's the waiting that kills you. I'm sorry. Now I'm sorry. No. No, I am. Look, do you always have to prove you're sorrier than me all the time? Sorry. Don't touch them! Stay away! Yours. Has it ever occurred to you we could fight over just about anything? It wasn't a fight, it was a disagreement. Oh, Sally, it was a fight! It was a disagreement! Look, what we're doing now is fighting! I disagree. You didn't have to come. If you're gonna get yourself murdered up an alley, wouldn't you want me there? Look, all I'm doing is collecting some merchandise. There's nothing dodgy about it. What, at this time of night? It's perfectly legit. I mean, I could have come earlier. So why didn't you? Well, it was daylight. Still, I suppose I have to admit it's hard to imagine anyone running into trouble over a consignment of novelty alarm clocks. I've got Dennis, sir. Dennis. Don't you think that shooting one of our own men might prove just a tiny bit counterproductive? Well, it was only in the shoulder. Expecting help, Valentine? Who needs help? You've already managed to lose one man against a pile of boxes. So where's your friend, then? Oh, he's not here. He dropped the stuff off earlier. What, at night, in a place like this? What's wrong with it? Well, why didn't he wait for you? 
At night, in a place like this? Thomas! What? I hope this isn't an off-the-back-of-a-lorry deal. Look, just look on the bright side, will you? I mean, that's how you found me in the first place, wasn't it? Off the back of a lorry. So what's the bright side? Well, I did, uh, get your engine started immediately, didn't I? Oh, disgusting. Yeah, there's that and all. Hey, listen, I'm getting a bad feeling about all this. Let's come back tomorrow, eh? What are you talking about? It's perfectly safe. Come on, there's no danger. Look, would I lie to you? Now, don't get cross. Helen, close the door. Don't kill them yet. See, I told you you're perfectly safe. Thomas, they've got guns. I had noticed, love. These your friends? Well, it's a bit early to tell, but it don't look promising, do it? Ooh. You've been very clever, whoever you are. You've already managed to disable one of my men. What are you talking about? We didn't do that. It was your singing. What are you talking about? Oh, must be the alarm clocks. I bet the pillow left them on. Michael, bring them up to the room. Move it. Yeah. And no talking. Reminds me of my school days. Apart from the guns. Oh, it's the guns I'm thinking of. I said shut it. Mm, sorry. Who are they? What would you say if I told you I don't know? I'd say I don't believe you. I don't know. I don't believe you. Yep, you were right. Door at the far end. And no tricks. You're going to tell me who they are. It's called a Glasgow kiss. What is? You'd better come in quietly and close the door. I'm really sorry about this, but nobody said they'd be singing. Who brought you up here? Strangely enough, he didn't have a lot of time for introductions, but he's still waiting at the top of those stairs. It won't take him long to get curious. I'm Valentine, by the way. My friends call me Davy. And then tie you to the furniture and cement your feet. Could you move me over to the door, please? Do what? Just over to the door. I think it'll take both of you. And that's too much, too much. Back about four inches.
again. There's another one somewhere. No, there isn't. Dennis? I'm not much good with these things, but if I keep firing, I'll hit something, right? Sally, you're a natural. You're all right, mate. All things considered, I'm fine, thank you. Now, if you wouldn't mind helping me up. No, of course, of course. Sally, come on, it's time to go. Well, what about him? Well, we can't take him prisoner. We've got nowhere to hide him. OK, dickhead. Let me tell you what you're going to do. I'm very grateful. You know, I consider myself a man who always pays his debts. You really must let me return this favour. No, really, but please don't bother. Actually, I really must insist. I hate owing anyone, you see. It's rather a thing with me. Well, just forget it. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't do that. <laughs> I heard the shot. Did you get anyone? Well... Eyes left cell. Just our night for it, isn't it? Oh, God. Suddenly spending the night in a warehouse being shot at seems relatively pleasant. Why do you say that? Doesn't matter. No, it's that lump of lard in the limo. Councillor Adams keeps refusing us permission to extend our office. Can he do that? Can he? Oh, yeah. Casting vote, all that, innit? Mind you, you should have seen the last bloke we've tried. Blew up boats. Why so interested? Oh, no reason. Property's always murder, isn't it? They're not professionals, sir. They're amateurs. You got lucky. Very lucky. Sorry. Incredible. We had him. We really had him. But a couple of amateurs. You realize they probably don't even know who he is? Hmm? Hmm? They don't even know that they've rescued the highest paid hitman in Europe. Wait to Scotland and back, just in case we're being followed. You don't think he's a bit off his trolley, do you? Well, he's quite funny, isn't he? I love that story about Doverson. Thomas, what did he mean he paid off his mortgage with a couple of South American presidents? Morning, Lively. So it is. Yeah, I'm sorry to get you up so early, mate, but we kind of need your help, Leah. This might be a new one for you. Is this some kind of a statue you're working on, Thomas? No, it's a man set in concrete. Oh, so it is. I was just thinking. Most lifelike. Thank you. Uh, Valentine, this is lively. You're very expensive clothes, sir. And a most remarkable cam about the condition of your feet. Did you keep them moving while it was setting? As much as I could. Hmm. Well, that always helps. You talk like you've done this before. Oh, no. Well, not an alive one. You want to get rid of him, I suppose? Well, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Good. Well, go on home, then. You look as if you do to sleep. Well, now you mention it, we might as well, then, eh? Off your pop, then. Yeah, cheers. 
Listen, if you're ever in Leeds again, we are busy. I'll probably be tied up myself. <laughs> Goodbye, Sally. Sorry, um... Yeah. Bye. Good people. I'm just thinking to myself, what business a man could be in that he'd make all that money and take such a big lump of concrete in my stride. Pippa, stop listening. Go back to your bed. I have a fiend for your kind. There was a certain chill in your eyes. And you've not seen their like before, my old man. Not on a live one. I need a hammer. You strike me, sir, as a man that doesn't put much value on human life. On the contrary, about 20 grand a time. I don't know what you're getting at. Expensive clothes and calm feet, Lively said. I don't know what he's getting at either. And what he said about his mortgage. No, no, he's talking rubbish, isn't he, the bloke? Thomas, I'm worried. That's understandable. It's been a funny old night, all in all. Thanks, you, Doc. No, thanks. You go ahead, though. Thank you. Old this Councillor Adams. Oh, have a look. Perfect. It's him. Valentine. I mean, who is he? What is he? Do you realise we never even asked? Yeah, I understand what you're saying, yeah. Do you? Of course I do. It's been a rough night. You're a bit shaken. You're a bit scared. And basically, you don't want to go in that big bed all on your own, do you? Thomas Gin. Mm -hmm. How is it possible for you to assume that when I am talking about the mystery surrounding a man whose life we have just saved, I'm actually talking about sex? Well, I suppose I just know you really well. Fair enough. Get him off. Hello. What did you mean, 20 grand a time? Nothing. A joke. Lively says you look like a killer. No, he didn't. It's what he meant, though. 20 grand a time. Do you kill people for money? No. You do, don't you? You're like... You're like a hitman, aren't you? Have you ever killed anyone famous? Ever! We're going for a walk, anyhow. Nothing of that happened to her. A lot of things will happen to that young lady. But I won't be among them. Could you come back in a little while? But look, this is important! So is this. What is it, Pippa? That fella, where did you find him? What fella? The one in the concrete, the it man. Sally? Hit man? Yeah. Do you know he charges 20 grand a time? How do you know he's a hit man? He told me. Thomas, could you come out here, please? Ah. Uh. No. No, not right this moment. Valentine's a hitman. So Pippa says. Hey, you! Expensive clothes, cooling concrete, South American mortgages, it all adds up. Thomas, will you get out here? So, where did you find him? It's a long story. Basically, we put our foot in it and so did he. So, he's a hitman, is he? Yeah. Think he's ever killed anyone famous? A hitman. Well, 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 thanks for filling us in on this paper. Come on, Sal. I think you're forgetting something. Yeah. Listen, Thomas, 
last night, you and I... Um, we won't be a moment. Yeah, you go for a nice long walk or something. Tom, no, here. no. Listen, last night, you and I pointed out our worst enemy to a hitman who wants to do us a favour. No kidding. God. Always, always, I'm coming. Lively, it's Sally. The man in concrete, is he still there? No. And a good riddance. And if I were you, Sally, I'd stay clear of that gentleman. I think it's a little too late for that. Thanks, anyway. Gone. Oh, God, what have we done? That's it, sir. All oh, right, thank you. What are you fellows usually on the outside? The personal preference. I like to work on the inside. Madness, this. Well, what else can we do? If we go to the police, do you really think they'll believe we hired a hitman by accident? Look, if we thought about this problem just for a little bit longer, it might just go away. We've wasted enough time. All Adams has got to do is find the old bill and we get done for attempted murder. I'm just hoping we're not already too late. Excuse me, is Mr Adams alive? In. In. Is he in? K2 to K1. Over. K1 receiving. Valentine has left the offices. He's now heading back to Ludmore Hotel. Oh, and I've got that taxi for four to Keltall Street you wanted. Over. Taxi? Damn it, you said there was no one else on this frequency. I keep telling you, his surgery's after lunch. I'm afraid you're like Mr. Urgent. Adams. Oh, yes. Then it's terribly urgent. Look, at least tell us which office he's in. Just hang around for a surgery. It's important. Oh, God, this is ridiculous. We mean, Dave. Oh, no, well, no offence. I mean, you're a woman, of course, but... Well, you know what I mean, don't you? Women, eh? Thomas? Are you sure it was him? Thomas, if he's got a gun across there... Listen, I'll talk to Valentine. You keep Adams away from the window, right? Hold on, I don't even know where he is. How am I going to get past that? Oh. Thank you, Miss Leacock. One. It's that woman from the warehouse. What? Excuse me, do you have a Mr. Valentine staying here? Sally. Shall we stroll? Morning, Gov. 
Just here to do the window. They've been done. What? A couple of minutes ago, they've been done. Yeah, but not very well. What? Apparently, there's been some complaints. Well, not from me. And I'm the only person in here. Oh, no, no, not, not you. No, no. It's um, over the road, apparently. They can't see in. I'll just check out the situation. Eh? Just get on with it, will you? Here I go, sir. I don't understand it. What's he up to? We didn't know what you were. One doesn't tend to tell people outright. I did, however, tell you about my mortgage. Pity we didn't work it out on the spot. But people who spend the night on the point of death aren't always at their best, are they? Yes, I've come across that. What do we do, sir? Nothing. Too many people around. What room did you say he was in? Room 206. Being used by some guy called Adams. I've set the rifle up in a hotel room two floors above. And I brought the trigger with me. Remote control? Sometimes it's sensible not to be in the same room when the gun goes off. Though usually I prefer the personal touch. We don't want this. Oh, it's no trouble. We don't want him killed. Look, I told you, it's on the house. Oh, please, listen to me. Don't do this. I don't want a murder on my conscience. Do you understand that? Just take the gun and go. Fine. You told me not to do it. You've done everything you can to stop me. Now, off you go home. Do you really think that's going to fool me? I think it might if you try a little harder. You're just going to wait here for Adams to appear at the window? Oh! What are you doing? I think you're the devil, Mr. Valentine. Give me the control, Sally. I don't get it. I really don't get it. Who is this Adams? Haven't you finished yet? Me? Yeah, yeah, all done. Look at that. Clean as a whistle. Well, you can go then, can't you? Yeah, I can. Uh, excuse me, um, I'm gonna have to ask you to keep well away from this window. What? Why? Well, you, you might make it dirty. Of the window, Sally. He's right in place. And all you have to do is press a button. Just one button, Sally. Just the tiniest pressure of your thumb. No one would ever know. You have the word of a professional for that. Come in. I'm just here to clean your windows. I think it's time I went for lunch. What are you trying to prove? More than trying, I think. So? K1 to K2. He's got a remote control gun at the window of the hotel. You've got to be careful with that, mate. I mean, they start switching channels in the next room. You could machine gun the entire street, couldn't you? Look, I really don't think we should stand here. Where's your car? What? We're in trouble. Where's your car? Well, it's the end of the road. Why? What's up? Let's move it. K1 to K3. Get the car around here fast. I'd like to, sir. Well, we've got a slight problem here. Look, I'm trying to tell you, the taxi for Kelsall Street was a mistake, all right? I don't know how they found me. They must have been watching the hotels. Who? Our friends from the warehouse. Oh, God! Alan, follow them. Come on. Over it. Oh. 
Allen. What have you found? Some kind of remote control, I think, sir. With a button on top. Sir, did you hear a shot? Sir? Look, can we just get this straight once and for all? We do not want Adams killed. Do you understand me? Are you listening to me? We don't want this! Listen, just for once in your life, listen, will you? You've done everything in your power to stop me. Your conscience should be clear. I pay my debts. That's a point of honour. I'm sure you understand. something of a surprise for Councillor Humphrey Adams when his office window spontaneously shattered. Councillor Adams, who had just stepped out for lunch when it happened, commented that the window in question had been giving trouble for some time. Mr Adams is this evening appearing in a special charity show at the City Varieties. And finally, alarm is being caused by mysterious outbreaks of ghostly singing from a deserted canal side warehouse. a man die tonight. Trevor, it says here elephants. Slip of the pen. I meant the dancers. Oh, right. Bill, be honest. Do I look like a dog? Which end? Are we using that old lighting box? No. Well, no one should be in there. See, I just don't feel enough of a dog yet. Take a walk, Brian. Yeah, I might do it. Better come in. There's only one thing we can do. We go to the police. The police? Yeah, smashing idea that, isn't it? Excuse me, officer, we happen to have accidentally hired a hitman to knock off a counsellor, but we didn't mean to, honest. Oh, and you've got lots of bars on your windows. OK, so we don't go to the police. What's your name? Bill. And what do you do here, Bill? I'm a stage manager. How interesting. I've done a couple of directors, but never a stage manager. There's only one thing we can do. We try and warn Adams again. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. Adams. We just happened to have hired a hitman to kill you. You know how these little things happen. All we want you to do is stay away from the windows and don't phone the old Bill. <laughs> oh, look. We're back in that little room with a toilet in the corner. Are you just going to sit there and be sensible all the time? My problem is this. If I let you out of here alive, you're going to tell someone about me, aren't you? You're going to assure me you won't tell a soul. The thing is, I find myself unable to trust you. 
I'm afraid one meets a lot of untrustworthy people in my profession, Bill. Briefly. Drink, Bill. Right. There's only one thing for it. We find Valentine and we stop him. Here. Look under H for Hitman. We know where he's going to be tonight. That charity show, I'm sure of it. Look, even if you're right, we can't stop the man. We've tried. Well, I'm going to the theatre. Sally, Valentine is a killer, right? With a load of other killers right on his tail. I'm, I'm just thinking of your safety. Fine. OK, I'll stay. You go. You'd let me go all on my own? Whiskey? What did you expect? I can't kill you, you know. If you go missing before the show, they'll look for you. If they look for you, they might find me. You see the problem. I can't keep you here. But I can't let you go. Drink up. This is stupid. I mean, shouldn't we think about this a bit more? Talk it over. What is there to talk about, eh? You give me one good reason why we shouldn't go straight to that theatre. Well, we might not get a ticket. <laughs> Amateurs. Must be the most easily traced car in Leeds. There now. That help at all? Give you any idea? Where do you suppose they're headed? I don't know. Valentine's bound to be there somewhere. <laughs> but does it say dog to you? It says dog. But does it really say it? Brian, it barks, OK? Everybody. There's a... There's a... <laughs> We're going to stop this, Valentine. I suppose we've actually got to find him, haven't we? What do you suggest, eh? That we leave him a note at the stage door? Well, a strongly worded one. Thank you. What a fabulous crowd. Anyway, we've got a fantastic showbiz extravaganza here for you tonight. Some of the acts we've got tonight will totally underwhelm you. Here in the entertainment mecca of the Northern Hemisphere. The band are working under a severe disability this evening. They're sober. But anyway, we've got a fabulous sort of out-of-season pantomime for you. And we've got lots of local celebrities. Now, see how many you can spot, because I think we've got quite a few surprises for you. Ten quid a ticket, that's a bleeding liberty, isn't it? A tour of Japanese whaling So where's Valentine? Well, somewhere where he's got a clear view of the stage, I suppose. That certainly narrows things down, doesn't it? Mm. Listen, you go backstage and stop Adam's going on. How? Well, you're the one always going on about your clever tongue, aren't you? You've been quite complimentary yourself at times. Oh, shut up. Well, hold on, what are you going to do then? What we should have done a long time ago. Go on! Listen to me. You've got to listen to me. Oh, uh, 
police, please. I am here to bring you magic seldom seen and rarely performed from the magic east. The ancient bottle and glasses. Now this glass is 5,000 years old and this bottle 10,000 years old. Should this bottle disappear, it would be tragic. <gasps> Should it reappear, it would be magic. <laughs> The City Varieties leads. There's a man with a gun, so for God's sake, hurry. Someone's going to be shot. Shot? <laughs> I shall now demonstrate some of my more remarkable and incredible... <laughs> Could you come off stage with me behind this tree, please? Ladies and gentlemen, I shall now... Ladies and gentlemen... Ladies and... Will you stop doing this? <laughs> Get out of my way. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Get out. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this wasn't in the script. You read the script. You've got to listen to me, mate. You've got to get off the stage. Wait a minute. Aren't you that window cleaner, fella? Well, yeah, yeah, but, but I can explain all that, honest. How? We're having a lot of trouble with that window. <laughs> nice one, mate. Quite sorry we have to chuck you out, actually. Go on. Hello, Mr. Valentine. Sally. How did you find me? Will you listen? There's a bloke in there with a gun! Three blokes, actually. What are you doing here? I came to watch. What? Oh, don't mind me. Sorry, does, uh, does someone watching make you nervous? Mm. I'm rather the same when I'm working, actually. Sally, leave now. Once I've killed him, you mustn't be found here. It doesn't matter, really, because once you have killed him, I'm going to confess I hired you to do it. Where's Valentine? Look, if I knew, I'd tell you, wouldn't I? I mean, right now, I'd tell you where my granny hides her jewels, but I don't know. Honest. Dear me, Sally Hardcastle, is this your big plan to stop me? You kill him, I confess to murder and go to prison. You won't confess, you know. Once he's dead, once there's nothing you can do, you won't give up your liberty so easily. I'm doing only what I have to do. I know your lives would be better if this man were dead. So I am honor bound to do you this service. In a sense, it's none of your business. See, the thing is, I'm extra sensitive to pain. Oh. Was that it then? Do you know, I'm beginning to believe you. I thought you had a kind face as soon as I saw you, I did. You'd have known anything, you'd have whimpered it by now. Too bleeding right, I would, I would. Stick him in the boot. We can dump him somewhere later. Did you go anywhere near the marina? Oh, hold on, hold on. Look, I won't be able to breathe in here. Michael, fix his breathing for him. Oh, uh, no. Look, uh, if you can take a bit of constructive criticism, I think you're putting the air holes in the wrong place, mate. Michael, I think you'd better drop the gun. Hey, 
Ladies and gentlemen, a technical fault has developed. Please remain in your seats. You've no idea where he is? No, none at all. No, no. All I know is he's got a gun and he's a pro. Listen, everyone. You found the police. What are you going to do? Sally, you found the police. I had to. They have enough on me to put me away for the rest of my life. So? Run. And leave you here to point the way. Or take you with me to slow me down. I'm afraid, Sally Hardcastle, you've left me with no option. No, you can't. Please, don't do it. I'm sorrier than I can tell you. But you can't, you can't do this. Someone will hear, someone will... You're on a bound, Valentine. You owe me, remember. Thomas and I saved your life. You can't expect that to count now. Depends on you. Depends on whether you're the kind of man who pays his debts. Or do you only pay your debts when they don't hurt, hmm? You tell me you're a man of honor. That's what all this crap was about. Well, right now, Valentine, you just look scared with a gun. So really, it comes down to this, Valentine. Can you kill someone you owe? I'm the devil, Sally Hardcastle. What does that make you? It's all right. You can relax. I've been disarmed. She got me. You know something? In all the years I've been helping the police with their inquiries, that's the first time I've helped the police with their inquiries. I can't believe you did that. Did what? With Adams. Well, we did save his life. After putting it in danger. No, that was an accident. I know, but ask him to refund our theatre tickets. Sally, that was 20 quid. <sighs> Listen, as we're here, I was just wondering... Wondering what? Well, now, don't get angry or anything like... What? We couldn't just pop back and pick up those alarm clocks, could we? Thomas! 